tremendous transitions. We're watching the Luciferian agenda being exposed everywhere. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. We're watching a fall away of many believers. We're watching a removal of individuals that are in the way. Hallelujah. We have been trained, taught to do our part. Refusing not to do it is very dangerous. I'm going to say that again. Refusing not to do your part is very, very dangerous. <clears throat> in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 20, let's speak it. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, and some for honor and some for what? Dishonor. I want to talk about vessels of dishonor. Because that's what the Luciferian agenda is all about, is creating vessels of dishonor. Or trying to pull vessels out that are honorable to become dishonorable. Let's go a little further. Therefore, in verse 21, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, in other words, from his past, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee, therefore, youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call uh, on the Lord with a pure heart. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God will perhaps grant them repentance so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. These vessels, you have a choice to be a vessel of honor or a vessel of dishonor. Vessels of dishonor all are connected to the Luciferian agenda of the Antichrist regime. They've been taken captive for the mind and soul to fulfill the will of the devil, or what we call demons, the voice of the stranger. They are hosts. So their purpose is to take possession of a body or a host to fulfill the will of the enemy. Everyone that is not the seed of Christ and filled with the spirit of Christ and following the words of Christ is a vessel of dishonor. Does everybody get it? They are called vessels of dishonor and there will be no vessel of dishonor that enters the kingdom of Christ. In 1 Peter chapter 1. In other words, there is no salvation for a vessel of dishonor. Now, there are individuals that are vessels of dishonor. You can call them backslidden individuals. People that are not saved yet. Amen. Gentiles, they're vessels of dishonor. Until you become Christ, you become born again in the Spirit. But many people have been taken out from that position and led back. And now we're at one time vessels of honor, but now are vessels of dishonor. Amen. But there are vessels of dishonor that can never be saved. Never. There is no salvation for a vessel of dishonor for some individuals because they're not of this race. And we'll talk about that. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. Would you read it with me? Since you have what? Purified your what? Your souls. Remember... The other ones have been taken captive. A vessel of dishonor has been taken captive in the minds and in the soul. He says, since you've purified your souls in doing what? Obeying the truth. In other words, following and practicing the truth, which allows conversion and, and regeneration. 
through the Spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a what? Pure heart. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. Because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of the grass. And the grass withers and the flower falls away. But the Word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the Word by which the Gospel was preached to you. You and I were purified in our souls by obeying the truth of the words of Christ and following, practicing, putting them into operation. In other words, we're not following, we, we were born again of incorruptible seeds from Christ Jesus, his words. We're allowing the conversion of the soul and the regeneration of a spirit and these temples or what we call vessels become vessels of honor. Everyone say vessel of honor. Not dishonor. <laughs> In Psalm 119. Hallelujah. Psalm 119, verse 1. Starting at verse 1. Blessed are the what? Undefiled. So cursed are the what? Defiled. So one's a vessel of honor and one is not. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law or in the word of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart. He's talking about vessels of honor. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. I will praise you with an uprightness of heart. When I learn your, for your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. Blessed are the undefiled vessels of honor and cursed are the vessels of dishonor. In 1 Corinthians 3. In verse 16. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 16. Let's speak it. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Paulus or Cephas or the world of life or death and all things present or things to come, all are yours. And you are Christ, and Christ is God's. We are temples. We are hosts of God's. With a spirit, words, and character as image and likeness, through the born-again conversion and regeneration that has been conducted in me and you by the Creator and only by Him can produce these things. All things have been granted to me and you. We have favor from above. We are blessed. We prosper. All things work to the good, but a vessel of dishonor will not. A vessel of dishonor feeds on its past, and not on its future. Does everybody get that? A vessel of dishonor feeds on its past, not its future. In 1 Corinthians 6. First Corinthians six fifteen. It 
Is everybody there to speak it? Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, will become one flesh. Now this is powerful. Because the enemy knows the scripture. So he knows that two, putting two things together can produce another body. Spiritually, there's a host. So when an individual falls into fornication or an individual begins to worship other gods, they create another possession in their bodies and produce another type of living expression, spirit, character that is either a vessel of honor or dishonor, depending whether you're joined with Christ or you're joined with an antichrist. Amen? Verse 17, But he who is joined to the Lord is one, one spirit with him. Then he says, Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body or temple or host. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you have from God, and you are not your own. For you were brought, bought by a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. We are members of Christ, vessels of honor, joined to the vessel of Christ Jesus. But there are many who are vessels of dishonor because of who they join themselves with. In other words, the word says, what you agree with, hello, you become, you become part of. So if you agree with the voice of a stranger, he's going to take possession. He's going to take a part of your members. You're going to let him, but when we shouldn't. But know that there's a genetic joining. That's a part of the Luciferian agenda. Bringing a genetic joining to establish a hybrid their main focus is a breeding program because God stopped the fallen angels from putting on flesh when he brought judgment to them. So they had to come in another way. So that's why you're hearing about all kinds of UFOs, all kinds of abductions, all kinds of things. UFOs, un uh, unidentified flying objects. Well, they are real. There are spacecraft. There are certain beings, but they are... They call them aliens, but they are fallen angels, and they're a race of them. There's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of them. Remember, when Lucifer only took, he took a third of the angels with him. Now think about that. A third of the angels. So the rest are servants of the Lord. All of them are fallen angels. They're vessels of dishonor. Their principalities, powers of darkness, wickedness, and heavenly places. They rule over cities, states, and counties. But those are individuals that cannot come into the flesh. The only thing that they can do is scientifically, genetically create. Even though they can't create, but they can manipulate another hybrid or being. They can look human. But these are vessels of dishonor that will never have salvation. Even the fallen angels can never have salvation. Does everybody understand that? They can never have salvation. So their purpose is to destroy mankind and everything God created. To create their own race. They have been breeding for a long time, but the technology they've had has only been recent, maybe for the last 20 or 30 years. In the 1940s, I don't know the exact date or whatever, when they began to reveal themselves more and more, and they actually had a meeting with one of the presidents of the United States. They met at an Air Force base. There was three flying saucers that came. One landed. The base was supposed to have been emptied. But some of the mechanics stayed behind and recorded and filmed everything. 
and they saw the President of the United States, I forgot who it was, Eisenhower? Yeah. So there was one flying saucer on the runway, another one above it, another one further away. And these beans came out, hybrids. And they had a meeting with the president. And they came up with an agreement. And the agreement was that they would receive technology and propulsion. That's how you have rockets. Although they would not release the gravity technology yet. But eventually they have. But the agreement was the exchange of technology for access to humanity. Does everybody get it? So they were able to abduct people to begin to take eggs and so forth and then try to duplicate them to create their own race. Does everybody understand that? And they have succeeded with that. Their breeding program has created many thousands and hundreds of thousands of hybrids that are living all through the earth right now. You may think I'm too sci-fi. They've infiltrated all military. They've infiltrated, infiltrated political. That's why when you talk to some of these people, there is no desire for salvation. There is no desire for certain things. They're just here on a mission to complete it. And that's it. They have no afterlife. Even though some of them now that, now we've got people that are been promised afterlife that are vessels of dishonor that are not hybrids, but they're vessels of demons. Amen? Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. So these members of Christ are vessels of honor. The members of Antichrist are vessels of dishonor. So there's a genetic joining, just like the Lord said. A man shall leave his family and become joined with what? A woman and become what? One flesh. They've taken that technology, that genetic information, and corrupted it. Breeding program because God stopped the fallen angels from putting on flesh. They had to come in another way. Is everybody okay? Genesis 3. So if they're able to clone out of the test tubes, hello, they can duplicate eggs, create synthetic uh, embryos, and produce hybrids. They have no salvation. In verse 14, Genesis 3, 14. So the Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, more than every beast of the field. And on your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. So he was upright at the time. And I'll put hatred, enmity between you and the woman and between your seed. Now remember, your seed. Why? Because the woman was what? Impregnated with a seed of the serpent. I will put hatred between your seed and her seed and, and he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his what? Heal. The seed war of manipulation and multiplication since the creation of humanity of Christ and the Antichrist vessels of honor and dishonor. The earth is infested with hybrid hosts that cannot obtain salvation through the breeding process of the genetic restructure involving the fallen angel, or what they call alien race, and scientific artificial altered embryos, or what they might call fertilized eggs, creating a race of vessels of dishonor, influencing the world through their system, through their world, the earth, through their world system, and propaganda and doctrine of demons. You know, one of the things that there is a spiritual realm and a physical realm, but both of them are the same reality. Does everybody get it? They're not two different realities, they're the same. 
But in there, there's a seen realm and there's an unseen realm. But it's of the same reality. But you and I are to make what's unseen to become more of a reality than what is seen. Does everybody understand that? In Ephesians chapter 2. That's why you may hear the voice of the Lord say, don't pray for that person. That person might not be redeemable. If he tells you not to pray for that person, there's a reason. Ephesians chapter 2. You got to remember, how did the giants come back after the flood? Because Ham married a hybrid, a fallen one. And that gen genetic union produced giants again, where you got Goliath and everything else. But that was physical, wasn't it? But they couldn't reproduce fast enough because God stopped it. When Jesus came with the blood of the Lamb, things changed. They were redeemable. But what they're creating now is unredeemable. Does everybody get this? <laughs> Ephesians 2, starting at verse 1. Oh, happy days. Is everybody okay? Let's speak it. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of air. Now, I'll grab hold of something. The prince of the power of air means he controls airwaves. He controls the sky. Think about that. He's called the prince of power of air. He controls those areas. His airwaves... Mind things, air waves. He controls the media, air waves, radio, air waves. He controls the UFOs, air waves. He controls the skies. That's why the word says in the latter days there'll be all kinds of false signs in the sky. In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of what? Disobedience or what? Dishonored vessels. Among whom also we once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. In other words, we were born in that condition as a vessel of dishonor. Until you are born again in Christ. But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead in trespasses. When we were vessels of dishonor. <laughs> made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved by his plan. And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. And his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. The prince of power of air and sky. Again, I shared about the covenant that was made between the ruling forces of the United States and the fallen angels. It wasn't just here. It was every nation. It wasn't just the United States. In fact, Germany had already done that prior. That's why Germany had all the technology there. They had flying saucers. They had the, uh, 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 and Hitler was a worshiper of Satan. In fact, he sent military operations everywhere to find all the artifacts and everything that they could about the alien race all over the world. That's why they were in Antarctica first. Now you have all of these bases and stuff in Antarctica because they're finding all kinds of stuff there. Listen, they have cities under the water, under, in the ground, all over the earth. There's tunnels that connect everywhere all over the world. There are hybrids, there are grays, and they're called whites. 
Some of them were fully formed. Some of them that weren't went in the ground. They have many of these hybrids on film, on people's homes, coming to their houses, all kinds of stuff. Hallelujah. In verse 14, Ephesians 2.14, let's speak it. It says, for he himself is our peace who made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity or hatred that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the what? Two. Do you understand that? <laughs> to create one new man from the two. That's what they've been trying to do. But they're genetically doing it, not by the power of Christ. So they're creating their own, they're manipulating gen genetics of humanity and creating an artificial embryo and hybrids that are unredeemable, that look just like humans. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 16. And that he might reconcile them to God in one body through the cross. Through the what? Through the cross. Thereby putting to death the enmity, the hatred. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access to, by one spirit to the Father. Now therefore you are no longer strangers, foreigners, vessels of dishonor but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Wow. Creating one new man in Christ with the eternal salvation while a Luciferian agenda is producing hybrids of scientific, scientific manipulation of one vessel of dishonor and no salvation. 1 Peter chapter 1. You know, the Lord also told us you never know who you're going to be talking to. First Pete. First Pete chapter one, verse fifteen. I think. Oh, happy days. Fifteen, sixteen. Maybe it's second Peter. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's start at uh, verse 13. That's what it's supposed to be. 13. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Therefore, gird up the loins of your, your mind, your thoughts. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace, the plan of God, that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who is without partiality, judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, then knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in his last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another what? Fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides 
forever and ever. You know, you and I have been redeemed from the corruptible things, and we must maintain our deliverance from demonic dishonor vessels, not becoming foolish in loss of our deliverance. Amen? Many become foolish and lose their deliverance by opening the door. It's a demonic activity. It takes one agreement to start it. Then what happens, they start fighting with the agreement instead of repenting and nullifying that agreement. Don't fight with the agreement. Nullify it and remove it. Amen? You keep fighting with it, and another one comes. And another one comes, and another one comes. And next thing you know, you're back, right back where you were. Ephesians 4. Verse 17. I don't think anybody here wants to be a vessel of dishonor, right? We wouldn't be here. <laughs> Verse 17, let's say it. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind. Are they vessels of dishonor? Yes. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you had heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Now listen, your old man is growing corrupt. It isn't going to get any better. Your old man cannot be converted. It's going back to the dust where it belongs. Your new man is the one that the enemy's after now. Because your old man is your flesh. The new man is a new spirit in you. So now the enemy wants to use your old man to attack your new man. But if you're led by the spirit, your old man can't touch you. Amen? He says that you put off concerning your old man or your conduct, your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt. It's constantly growing corrupt. So the more you allow the flesh to infiltrate, the more corrupt you become. According to the deceitful lust. Now, lust. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Lust of the world. But he says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind, your thoughts. In other words, constantly renewing yourself. So that you will not agree with anything that the enemy is trying to corrupt you with or defile you with. So that the old man cannot be reactivated. Amen. And that you put on the new man which was created according to God to, in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, put it away, lying. Let each of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry, don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give place, nor give place, nor give place, nor invite the devil. <laughs> Any demon, corruptible seed. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working in his hands what is good, and that he may have something to give someone who is in need, and let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Hello. But what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. In other words, make no place for the devil, and become a vessel of honor. Galatians 3. Verse 1. All foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you, <laughs> that you should 
not obey the truth. Bewitched means witchcraft was used to deceive you in your mind, in your thoughts. That you should not obey the truth. That you should not follow the doctrine of Christ, the words, or be led by His Spirit. Because whose eyes Jesus Christ is clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, and are now being made perfect by the flesh or by the law? Have you just suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore, know that only those who are with faith are, see, are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, Preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations will be blessed. So then those who are of the faith are blessed with believing Abraham. For as many as of our, the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Curses everyone who does not continue in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith. But the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. One of the things the enemy loves to do is put people back under the law. Like the Ten Commandments. Which nobody can really obey without the Spirit of God. Amen? So there's really no grace under that. So if you disobey, you walk away from grace, you walk away from the Spirit of God. And you justify yourself by just the word or the letter, you're in trouble. Because the letter kills and the spirit brings what? Life. But that is a ploy of the enemy. That's his job. He does it very well. But it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, curses everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. Oh, hallelujah. Again, they attempt to remove from us the plan of grace and the relationship of his presence and bring us into a self-righteousness of the law or the letter, not able to fulfill it. They know they can't. That's a ploy of the enemy. What, to bring a person of honor to dishonor? Romans 8. Thank God we don't live according to the law. We live according to the guidance of the Spirit. But that takes relationship, doesn't it? It takes God's presence. Without all His presence, you ain't going to do nothing. Verse 1, therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh or according to the law, but according to the what? Spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do and it is weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the what? Spirit. Now that's phenomenal. Living according to so from now on, we don't, we don't live according to the flesh or according to the law. We live according to the spirit of grace, which is God's plan. When we are walking in the guidance of the Holy Spirit, is anointing. And it's the only way to fulfill the law and keep us freed from that curse of the law. But the enemy wants to bring us always back into the law where people begin to justify by what they know instead of who they know. So I'm going to say that again. They justify themselves by what they know instead of who they know. And there's a difference. Second Peter 2. Verse 18. It 
2 Peter 2.18, it says, For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they lure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them freedom or liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. In other words, these are vessels of dishonor. For by whom a person is overcome by him, also he is brought into bondage. For after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they again entangle in them and overcome the latter and is worse for them than the beginning. It makes it difficult. For it would have been better for them have not to known the way of righteousness than having known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered by them. But as happened to them, according to a true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit, and a so having washed to its wallowing in the mire. Remember, dog means demonized individual. Amen? Demonized individual. So in this, hallelujah, God is good. <laughs> All the time, amen? He's good. So, Restoration comes after reconciliation. So many times people are looking for restoration without reconciliation. First, there's got to be a reconciliation to God the Father through the Spirit and Jesus. Then there can be restoration where God begins to restore. So there's first got to be a, a, a reconciliation in the area to his presence and to his words in the process of conversion and regeneration. Now, this is to all races of humanity, but not hybrid antichrist race. They cannot be redeemed. They can only take possession and position of the government, political, education, medical, media, and so forth. And they influence individuals to become disobedient to the ways of Christ. Is everybody okay? Let's go to Romans 8, 18. I mean, we are being bombarded everywhere now, you know. I mean, they're coercing people to take medications they don't want to. You know, I mean, everything is a pill these days. Every commercial on TV, every radio commercial, everything is something about a pill or something you got to take. They don't talk about preventative maintenance, uh, preventative medicine. They talk about just take a pill. And the pharmaceutical companies are getting wealthier and wealthier and wealthier. Or people are bound by addictions of medication. Romans 8.18. Let's speak it. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also we have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption and the redemption of our body. For we are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope for why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Perseverance. So we see that even the whole corruption of the whole earth is going to be turned into the hands of the righteous. Everything that's been dishonored will be con become honored. It will be cleansed. And it will be turned over to the children of God. Now I'm going to close at Romans 2. I think. I can't read my writing, but praise God. <laughs> Verse 
Vessels of dishonor have no salvation. Whether you're a hybrid or not. <laughs> if you're a vessel of dishonor, you ain't getting home. Bottom line. Verse 1. Let's speak it. Therefore you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are, who judge. For whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you judge, you practice the same thing. Oh, hallelujah. Hypocrite. But we know that the judgment of God is according to the truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this man, oh man, you judge, you who judge these practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? But in accordance with your hardness and your impen, impen, hard heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds eternal life, who by patience, continuance, and doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey on righteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, anguish, on every soul of a man who does evil, of the Jew first and also of the Greek. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. Remember, God is not judging you by your works. He's judging you by your heart. And by your heart, he judges you by your choices. Because your heart is the core of all choices. What are you choosing to agree with? What are you choosing to disagree with? What are you choosing to touch? What are you choosing to un uh, not touch? So you and I are judged by what we choose. Because those are the fruits of your heart. Your choices. What you choose to speak. How you choose to respond or react. All of these things are choices that you and I have. It's either sowing to the flesh or sowing to the spirit. It's either producing a vessel of honor or a vessel of dishonor. Amen? So when we get caught in the trap, repent quickly. Amen? When you find yourself in a react, get out of there. Don't justify it. Don't reason it because it just goes deeper and then more seeds get planted. And you'll lose track of how many seeds have been planted through that. And actually, you know, it just keeps recycling and repeating itself. Why? Because there's so many seeds that have been planted of corruption. Those are called corruptible seeds. See, the enemy likes to slap you on one cheek and, slap and plant a seed in another. His main focus, remember, his greatest weapon is deception. That's distraction. People are being distracted these days, not being able to follow what's happening. He loves to cause confusion. The word says where there's confusion is, every evil thing is. So we want to be vessels of honor, not dishonor, but know that there are vessels of dishonor that are hybrids, not of humanity, but imitate humanity. And there is no salvation for them. But they are used. Read the book of Revelation, see some of them. But some of them are, in the book of Revelation, they express what they look like, but it's not exactly how they look like. It's expressing their character. Does everybody understand that? You've got to really interpret the symbolism in the book of Revelation to understand what's really happening. So God is preparing us and warning us on associations and things that are happening right now and a great influence to create dishonorable vessels. Amen. But praise God, you stay in the Spirit, stay filled, be led, trust Him all the way. Amen? Thank you, Father. We love your word. We thank you for your counsel, correction, and direction today, and your preparation for each and every one. So, Lord, prepare our hearts today to receive your communion and fellowship with you. That we may be one and joint with you producers of your righteousness and expressors of your image and likeness and character in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.